So as of the time of recording this video, in about two days, I will be have been a full-time data analyst for two years, um, which is kind of crazy. But in this video, I want to talk about whether or not I regret my decision to get into the data analysis space at all. Before I can do that, I think it's important to have a little bit of background about what it is exactly that I do as a data analyst, um, because my role might not be a typical data analysis role that you expect. Um, in my current role, I'm currently working on kind of a large dashboard that the company that I work for, which is an insurance company, both analysts and business users can use to hone into a certain population of our members um, who have our insurance and look at them from a kind of population health perspective and answer some interesting questions using that dashboard. Um, whereas a lot of the other analysts that I work with on my team who might not necessarily be working on the same dashboard as I am, um, they're doing more of what you would expect where they're they have a certain question in front of them and they have to go find the data for, they have to answer some questions, provide summary statistics, maybe project out into the future and, and some more of that kind of thing. Um, so they're using like SQL and they might be using a certain analysis tool like SAS or R or Python. Um, but in my specific role, we're using R and R Shiny to build this dashboard. We're using things like BigQuery, Vertex AI, Dataform, which are some of the Google suite of technologies that they have available to us. So I think I personally benefit from the fact that I get to deal with a lot different types of technologies um, that maybe other analysts might not get to use all the time. I'll link a video for after this one talking about more exactly what I do, but now that you have a little bit of background, I just want to talk about do I regret my decision to get into this type of field? So the short answer is it depends. Um, I think in the past, when I first started as an analyst, I definitely did more of like the ad hoc type of approach to data analysis where I'm asked a specific question and then I have to go perform a specific set of steps to answer those questions, grab the data, format the data, maybe provide some projections, layer in some additional cuts to the data so that people can kind of segment out um, the answers as they see fit for different groups or populations that they might be interested in. That stuff to me is not really as interesting. Um, it's a little bit harder to focus on. But in my current role where I get to use like new technologies all the time and I get to learn all the time um, and I get to test things and try different things in the dashboard and I also get the feedback of uh, both analysts and business users using the dashboard so that I can improve it in the future. That is a lot more exciting to me. Um, now, maybe just hearing this, it sounds a little bit more almost like a software engineering role. I wouldn't consider myself a software engineer because we're simply just using our shiny to build the dashboard and then providing a lot of different types of like analysis functions and cuts and data visualizations and things like that. But that's still much more interesting to me than just working on kind of the ad hoc nature of some analyst roles. So for me, that's a huge benefit. Now for you watching, if you have a job in data analysis or you're looking to get a job in data analysis, this might not be true of your role. So that's kind of one regret of getting into the analysis space is that if I did not end up in a role like this, I think I would be very, very bored. Um, and not in the sense that it's boring to do analysis because I do like to do analysis, but I think it's boring in the fact that you're oftentimes revisiting the same topic over and over and over again, just for different cuts of a population. Now, this might not be true in other spaces other than kind of health insurance. Uh, maybe if you're working in tech, it's a lot more interesting. But I would have to imagine it's probably not. If you're working for a big tech company, you might be looking at like usage statistics of an application over and over and over again and providing like KPIs on those. That's not super exciting to me. Um, maybe it is to you. Maybe you like that kind of thing. Maybe you like kind of the routine of um, some of those types of analysis. But for me, it just makes it very, very hard to focus on that one thing. So if I had ended up in a role like that, that would be a huge regret for me. Oh, hey, real quick, I just want to jump in here and say, if you want to know if I regret majoring in statistics, this is more so focused on my data analyst career. If you want to know if I regret majoring in statistics, um, let me know down in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video on it. Back to the video. The other benefit of the type of role that I'm in is that it kind of makes your skill development and learning different technologies really, really fast. Because we're working in a fast cycle where we have to learn all the time to improve the dashboard that we're building, um, we get to learn a lot of new things very quickly. And oftentimes, right after we learn them and implement them into the tool, 
there's a new novel and exciting problem that we have to solve. Um, so that's a huge benefit of the current role that I'm in. Um, but the downside of that also is that oftentimes you might start to go down a rabbit hole and then something more important comes up and you have to drop that and move on to the next thing. Um, so if you're not into a certain type of um, work routine where you have to jump quickly between topics, which for me, again, does make it hard to focus. Um, if you're doing one thing for three days and then all of a sudden you get asked to put out a fire and you have to do something completely different, it's really hard to switch context and kind of go from diving super deep into this one topic and then turning around doing a 180 and having to focus on something else. Um, so that's not necessarily a regret of the job. It's just a downside or a challenge that you have to overcome in that type of a role. But on the positive aspect, as you're learning all these things and you have to move and turn and um, pivot very quickly, I think it gives you a sense of such fast learning that if you ever decide, okay, this job is not for me, you've experienced all these different things and you have a lot of maybe domain knowledge or some expertise in some of these different areas, you could focus in on that one area that you're interested in. So for example, in my role with building out an R shiny dashboard, if I just decide that, okay, I love the idea of building R shiny dashboards, I could try to find a role either at the company that I'm currently at or at a different company, just focusing on that. And the fact that I'm pivoting all these different areas and I'm like pulling all these different things into an R shiny dashboard, that's a benefit for the other employer. They say, okay, he's, he's done this before. He's, worked in all these different contexts within an R shiny dashboard, um, he might be a good person for the role. And that's the plus side. Um, if the downside of being in a role where you're maybe not pivoting all the time and context switching is that maybe you're so focused in on one thing that if you wanted to try to transition out of that career, it might be difficult because you're so focused on that one thing that that's all of the knowledge that you have in kind of that domain. I'm not saying it's impossible to transition into a different type of career, but maybe it makes it more challenging. So that's definitely a plus and something that I don't regret is that I get to do something new and novel almost once a month. So that's definitely a huge plus. The other huge plus is that with pivoting and doing different things all the time, I always have a new problem to solve. Um, I think in some analyst roles, like I said earlier, you're looking at maybe the same problem over and over and over again or over time. And you're just kind of tracking it with KPIs. Um, and I'm not saying it's hard, like it's not a good thing to be able to do that. It definitely is. And that's part of what the dashboard that we're building is doing is developing these KPIs. Um, but the thing is, if you're just monitoring the same problem over and over again, over time, it can get bland, it can get boring, um, and kind of squish down your creativity. Um, but the fact that I get to pivot and do different things all the time, I get to solve novel problems all the time. And that's another thing that just keeps your mind fresh. It keeps things exciting, keeps the job exciting and makes it a little bit less boring because I don't think any job in the data sphere, you're, you're not, I'm going to say you're never going to get bored uh, because there's going to be days where you just, I, I don't feel like doing this. It, it happens to everybody. It happens to me. I'm sure it happens to most of my coworkers too. Um, but that's just something you have to overcome. But the fact that you're doing different things all the time, it can definitely help with that feeling where you're just like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, the nice thing about my role, like in my company is that they give me kind of the freedom to say, okay, I am just like, I'm so burnt out with this certain thing. As long as it's not like something that needs to be done right now, I can pivot. I can say, okay, you know what? I'm going to work on this for a couple of days and then I'll come back to this other problem. That's just been bugging me and dragging on. I'll come back to that next week or something like that. Um, so that's definitely not a regret, but I could see in a role where it, your boss is really coming down to you onto you or your stakeholders are coming down onto you and they're saying, all right, you need to get this done this week or else, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, that's going to drag on you. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. Um, and if you don't want to do it and it's not like a novel problem to you that's exciting, um, it can be difficult to overcome that kind of thing. So for me, that's definitely not a regret because my role allows me to be creative. It allows me to jump around into different topics if I get too bored with one thing. Um, it's definitely a huge plus. And if you can find a role like that, I think it's worth it even if you have to take a pay cut maybe a little bit of a pay cut, not too much. I'm not saying you should sacrifice, you know, your ability to pay bills or buy a house or whatever you want to do. Um, but a role like that definitely allows you the freedom. Uh, it gives you the flexibility to work on what you like and it keeps things exciting and it almost makes you excited to come to work every day. Um, so that's definitely a big thing.
The other thing I don't regret about my job, and listen, I promise I'll get to some things that maybe I do regret, some things that are a little bit more challenging, um, but I just want to talk about the positives first because I really lucked out. I really did get a good role. Um, the other thing is the versatility is that being in this data analysis sphere, um, your your job is kind of in demand in a lot of different inter- industries. I'm not saying as a whole, like in our economy, at least in the United States, um, the job market's great for incoming grads and stuff like that. It's still really challenging and competitive to get a job. But the versatility of being in a data analysis role is that if you can go into maybe an industry that you're not super excited about, like maybe you're not excited about health insurance, but you can get an analyst role in a health insurance company, that allows you the, the ability to move into a different sector later on. Because even though, you know, health insurance or um, healthcare space space might not be directly correlated to um, an engineering or manufacturing space. Um, just the fact that you're able to take complex data from the healthcare space and turn it into something meaning, meaningful for stakeholders, that almost guarantees that you're going to be able to do that in a different sector like manufacturing or engineering. So the versatility of the role, I think, is going to benefit me in the long run. In case I get bored with the health insurance space or healthcare space, I can jump to a different sector. Um, and a lot of the skills I've learned are still going to be transferable. So that's definitely a plus. All right, now let's talk about some of the challenges. Some of the challenges are like things like jumping around all the time. It gives you a steeper learning curve in some sense, uh, because not only are you jumping around from topic to topic and not necessarily able to focus on one specific technology or technique or tool, it can be difficult to keep up with the ever-changing landscape of things. I, for example, don't have a lot of experience with SaaS. And coming into my role, a lot of my coworkers use SaaS. A lot of the data analysis sector, um, all within my company, uses SaaS. They have existing SaaS dashboards or SaaS via dashboards. Um, and some of that stuff is being transitioned into things like R or Python. But the fact of the matter is, is that other analysts in my company and in my department still use some of these tools like SaaS. And so it can be difficult and hard sometimes to have a conversation with them when they're saying, okay, this is how I would do this in SAS. How would I do that in R? But I don't necessarily understand how they did it in SAS. And even when they show me, it can be difficult. I have to learn very quickly, like, okay, this is what this means in SAS. How can I translate that into an R function and help this coworker out? And on the flip side, those people have used SAS their whole lives or for most of their analysis career. As we transition into things like Python and R, they have to learn very quickly on how to use those new technologies. So if you're not comfortable with change and um, learning new things all the time, that can definitely be a drawback. And it came back to bite me a few times. Even when I first started my role, I wasn't super familiar with SQL. Um, I had used it before, obviously, to get an analyst, analyst role. But as you dive further and further into SQL, you find out very quickly, especially like context switching between things like um, Oracle or Teradata or BigQuery, like all these different technologies that you might use SQL in. They kind of have their new own nuances and you constantly have to be learning in different functions that they might use and the, the different syntaxes that they might use. Um, specifically, as you get into BigQuery, there's a whole suite of new functions that I had never even knew existed in any SQL context. So that's a definitely kind of a regret of mine, but it's exciting at the same in the same point because you're even though it's difficult to learn, it's difficult to transition and understand all these different things with the steep learning curve. It's also exciting in the fact that you get to learn new things all the time. And um, the the benefit of that is that everybody in the department is going through the same thing. They're all learning things very quickly and trying to understand stuff. And you can just reach out and say, hey, I knew you're starting to learn BigQuery. Well, how do you do this in BigQuery? Um, and oftentimes you can find somebody pretty quickly who knows how to do what you're trying to do. So that's definitely a plus. But it, it is difficult to overcome, especially at first. Um, but however, the number one maybe challenge or regret that I have is just working with stakeholders. Oftentimes when you're working with business users, um, and by business users I mean people in the company who aren't necessarily technical in the sense of data, um, they often think data analysts or scientists or engineers, they're just always going to have the ability to get exactly what they want. Um, This just isn't true. Sometimes the data is impossible to get. Like maybe they're in the healthcare space, that happens a lot because as an insurance company, they might not have access to a certain type of health record. It just might not be, it might not even be legal for them to have it. And when a stakeholder comes to you and say, okay, I want this, 
you have to figure out as an analyst, okay, we can't, like, we literally cannot legally do that. We cannot grab that data, and we might not even have access to it to grab it. Um, that's one of the hardest parts of the job, is explaining that to stakeholders in a way that is not demeaning, it's not rude, um, it's correct, and <laughs> you have to do it in a timely manner because they are oftentimes they want their answers very quickly. Um, they might not also understand the timelines that it might take to build something, which is oftentimes why you need to learn how to give conservative estimates on how long something's going to take. Um, especially with the jumping around a lot in my career or in my job, um, context switching, that kind of thing, it can be difficult to maintain a timeline that you give somebody if it's too soon. Um, this happens all the time. If somebody says it's like, seemingly an easy question, maybe you have some experience doing it. Data can change. Sometimes a data source can change. Um, when you go to pull something, you might realize, oh, they've changed the location of this table or they've changed the field names of this table. And then you have to go back and re-understand the data source. Or maybe you've done something a while ago and you come back to it and you don't remember exactly what's going on. You have to track down the owner of the table and ask them some questions about the data source. And then you come back to your stakeholder and you give them what you think is the answer. And they're like, oh, no, that's not what I wanted at all. I wanted something completely different. This type of stuff happens more than I would like to admit, but it happens more often than you would think uh, as a data analyst. And not just for like somebody like me who's a newer analyst or a newer um, person in the data sphere. It happens a lot for experienced analysts, too. Because like I said, sometimes it's not even on the analysts themselves. Maybe something has changed recently and they just didn't do a good job at making it aware to the people using that table. That kind of thing happens a lot. Um, I wouldn't consider it a regret because it's just kind of an occupational hazard. It's kind of part of the job. Um, but it is very difficult to overcome sometimes. It's very difficult to come back to a stakeholder who... Maybe you've given one timeline and you have to come back and say, look, I'm, there's no way I'm going to get it done this week. It's going to be more like three or four weeks down the line. Um, and oftentimes, like like I said, stakeholders might not understand that. They might say, okay, what are you doing? Just messing around. Like, why can't you get to this to me this week? It's not a hard question to answer. Um, and well, maybe it's a seemingly easy question. Sometimes the data behind it or the analysis that you have to do or just other competing um, asks can take over. Um, and kind of stretch that timeline out. So that's definitely probably the hardest part of the job. Overall, though, I don't regret being an analyst. I love my role. I love the fact that I get to jump around a lot. Uh, but if you want to see more about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, check out this video next. But other than that, thanks for watching.